installing the Body Armor Highline Front Bumper on my Toyota Tacoma. Let the carnage begin. Well, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to Rob Motive. We're gonna get right into it today. I'm installing the Highline bumper from Body Armor on the front of my Toyota Tacoma. Now, I've already got the grill off uh, because I had a couple of things I had to do before, had nothing to do with the video. But if you've not done this before, it's pretty simple. There's a push pin that actually is right here. And then there are two screws, 10 millimeter, of course, and then another push pin here. Pop all those out, lift up the little brackets on the front that are over these two areas because they kind of overlap the lip of this. Pull those up and then pull the grill straight off. Could take a little pressure, but it comes right off. Fortunately for me, my wiring was long enough. I didn't have to disconnect the lights that I have in the grill. Although I am gonna have to lose the uh, LED light bar because it connects to something we're gonna remove down here. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. First thing I have to do is remove the license plate bracket. We need to get that out of the way. Pretty simple, just a couple of screws behind it. Next up, I'm gonna remove this piece here. Now, in the instructions uh, from Body Armor, it shows taking the whole bumper off. That's crazy, you don't need to do that. Uh, just a lot of extra work and potential for damage. Um, I'm gonna pull this off and it's just held on by push pins, um, or not push pins, but push in little arms, if you will. So I'm gonna try to do it just by hand. I think I might be able to just pull this thing off. So far. Didn't even need a tool for that. Next up, we have the crash bar here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that while I'm down here too. These are just held in by little push clips, if you will. There's one right there. Should just, man, that is so simple. Uh, they just pull off. All right, that was just that simple. And again, I did not break anything. And this is what the little clips look like or push in things. Pretty simple to do. Put this in our trash pile. Now we're going to go ahead and mark the bumper. We're going to mark right along here. I am going to tape it up. Um, I don't know that you really need to tape it because you're going to cut along the line that you draw and then also it's going to be covered by some uh, like weather seal molding. I'll show you that. But I'm going to go ahead and mark it anyway or tape it anyway, really just to hopefully get a smoother cut. All right, we've got it all taped up all the way down because we're gonna cut off from about here forward. So what you're supposed to do next is to measure 20 millimeters from the lip right here of the bumper or the trim piece, I guess, uh, back and then draw a straight line right up until about here on the corner and then you're gonna connect it to the natural line that is the side of the bumper because you're gonna cut uh, like this and then all the way down following that body line. So this line is easy. It's connecting up right here that I have found to be the more complicated part. Got it all marked up. Again, you want 20 millimeters off the center and then at about this point, right about where it starts to curve, uh, you want to connect it to the line, the natural line, down the side of the front of the bumper. So, next up is to cut. One thing I want to point out, I put a piece of metal behind where I'm going to cut here because I don't want to cut into the other plastic bits down here. And only on the corners is an area that you have to watch out for. Once you get about above here, there's really nothing else behind all the rest of the way till you get to the other corner. And I am gonna use a Dremel for this because I wanna be able to control it here uh, and not go too deep. So that's what we're gonna start with and then I'll probably switch to the oscillating tool. Oh, 
Okay, we finished the cut. I did finish it with the Dremel. Uh, what a mess. Uh, there's plastic all over the place. Another thing a lot of people don't show you in the videos, um, it does make quite a mess. At least the Dremel does. But it's off, it's free. Now, I do have two screws right up underneath to remove. Uh, there's two brackets holding this thing on. And then I can take it all the way off, clean this up, see if it actually fits. Man, I hope so. Because uh, I can't add material back. Next up is to remove the crash bar right across the front here, or the bumper, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you've got three on each side, 14 millimeter sockets for 14 millimeter nuts uh, to go ahead and pull off. And then on the sides, there is a 10 millimeter little screw that holds on this bracket. Make sure you save your hardware. You're going to need some of the OEM hardware for the bumper. Okay, one thing I do want to note, there is a little push holder-like thing. That's what that screw went through. You have to squeeze that to lift up the brackets on the sides. And that takes the aluminum crash bar out. Bumper, I guess this is your real bumper. Next up, we have to remove these whatever you want to call them, these brackets that held the uh, crash bar on, or the bumper on. So we're going to take these off next. Should be 14 millimeter once again. Okay, next up, we get to move this little cooler back a little bit. And they gave you some relocation brackets to do this. There are two bolts, one here and one over here. You can't miss them. You need to take those out. You're going to reuse them because you're going to put them through this hole and put it right back where the bolt was and then the brackets that fit from the cooler are going to go over this end and that's going to move it back about what is that about two inches or so now if you want to see if you have enough play to locate this thing back a little bit um doesn't look like i do there is a bolt a screw let me show you over in the wheel well and this is what you take out if you run into this it is sitting right there that's that bracket uh, that holds the side of it on so you want to remove that okay got the cooler there relocated one thing i do want to note the bolt that i showed that i took out in the wheel well to give a little more room you have to remove that or you cannot get it repositioned underneath there and then once that's done, that bolt does not go back in. It will not go back to where it was. So something they leave out of the directions. Now I'm going to grab this heavy thing and we're going to see if uh, my cut was any good, if it fits, before I put the weather stripping on because I may need to cut some more. Okay. Okay, it's on. Now the big question is, how does it fit? How am I doing on the sides? And you can see over here, maybe, uh, it's a little bit off. It actually could be trimmed just a little bit right here. Uh, and same thing on the other side. What I need to do is start about this little nub here and just take out a little sliver right there. And same thing on the other side. So I think other than that, I actually think the cut was pretty good. I made a couple more little cuts, just adjustments. I think it's fine. Um, we're gonna go with the way that it is. Now it's time to put the weather stripping on. That of course is to hide the edge. It's gonna go on just like so. It just pushes on. It's very simple to do. A little tip for you. Make sure you have all of the melted plastic off. It makes it a lot easier to put this on and you get a, a better looking job, I think. It's not going to kind of be wavy because it's going over those places. All right, got it all on all the way down to the bottom. And this is where it's important to make sure you try, and I know I failed, but try to have a, an even straight cut because if it's wavy at all, you're going to see it. Now, this is a minor thing. One of those picky things. If that kind of stuff doesn't bother you, then you're golden. 
But either way, it sure does look a heck of a lot better with that trim on it. And one thing I want to point out, the trim does have metal in it. If you guys can see that metal right there. So it's not just plastic. It's actually a metal material coated with plastic. I did not know that until I went to cut it with a pair of scissors. Now it's time to lift the bumper on here and get this job done. Now it's on. There are six bolts, three on each side. I need to tighten those up and then plug in my uh, wire, which I believe fits the wiring that came with the uh, LED light that I got. And uh, put the grill back on and we'll be done. And we can have a final look. A little sneak peek here. One thing I do want to mention, there are two more bolts, long bolts, uh, right here. They go through the bumper, through the frame member on each side. They're very easy, very accessible. So everything on this kit was pretty accessible. So no issues with that. This is the finished product. This is what it looks like. Came out pretty darn good, I must admit. Um, <laughs> of course, I'm the one that did it. Uh, but it did. I think it came out pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. I love the look of it. We have the headlights on right now, but let's take a look at what the lights look like in it. First of all, the front lights in the grill, you guys can see right there. And now the new light bar. Now that thing is pretty darn bright. I think it's gonna do what it's intended to do quite well. Um, I love the look of it. Couple of dings, uh, I'll give body armor on the Highline bumper. Number one, the instructions, and this is a small part, but the instructions on relocating that uh, line for the cooler um, it'd be nice if they said you're not going to be replacing that bolt. Um, secondly, it would be nice if there was some kind of a template that you could use to cut the bumper. Uh, everybody seems to have a different way of doing it and it's not anything real exact. Other than that, it is an awesome product. I highly recommend it if you're looking for something like this as opposed to a whole bumper. As far as the cutting goes, it can be a bit daunting, but I will say Using the oscillating saw is probably the best idea. Using the Dremel uh, kind of left too much material all glopped up on the cut. In other words, melted plastic. Wasn't a big fan of that. So I would recommend using the oscillating tool. Seems to work the best uh, for the best job that you can get. Anyway, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Do you like it or not? I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, I do have two additional channels Rob Motive Rides, all about the Mercedes-Benz, and Rob Motive JT, all about the Jeep Gladiator. Check them out, and if you're interested, please consider subscribing. And don't forget, smash that subscribe button on this channel, too. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.